Hi, my name is Amir Tatayabi, an assistant professor of biomedical engineering. And in this series, we talk about physiological systems in biomedical Today, we will discuss how numerically model valves in the cardiovascular system. So far, we have talked about wind castle model, different zero dimensional elements such as capacitors, resistors, and inductors and how we can use them in order to model blood flow in the vessels. If you haven't watched those videos, I encourage you to first watch them and then continue watching this video since we are going to use some of the equations and concepts that we have developed so far in this video as well as the next few videos. But now, let's get back to the valves. We all know that there are four valves in the heart. The mitral valve is located between the left atrium and left ventricle. Similarly, tricuspid valve is located between right atrium and right ventricle. Then the pulmonary valve is located between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. And similarly, aortic valve is located between the left ventricle and aorta, which can't be seen in this cross, cross section of the heart here. These are not the only valves that we have in the cardiovascular system. There are other valves in the venous system, such as this one in this scan here. Something that is common between all of these valves is that they only allow blood flow in one direction and prevent the flow in the opposite direction. So how, how we can model this behavior of valves using a zero dimensional element. We know that in electrical circuits, diodes only allow electrical current in one direction and prevent it in the opposite direction. So we can use diodes for that. But also we know that there is a viscous loss across a valve. This viscous loss can be modeled using a resistor similar to when we used resistors in order to model viscous loss in the vessels. So combining these two elements, a diode and a resistor, we can form this piece of circuit that can be used in order to model different valves in the cardiovascular system. In this circuit here, there is a pressure upstream of the valve, right before the valve, which is P1, and the blood pressure downstream of the valve, or right after the valve, P2. So Q, or flow rate, across the valve can be written as these equations, the combination of these two equations here. Remember that the valves only allow blood flow in one direction. So, look at these equations here. They say that when the pressure right before the valve is smaller than the pressure right after the valve, the valve is closed. But whenever the pressure upstream of the valve becomes larger than the pressure downstream of the valve, then there is a blood flow through the valve, across the valve. As you can see here, we have two equations for two different states in the valves. And we know that the valves switch between these two states here. Open, sorry, close, open. Close, open. We can write these two equations in one single equation using the heavy side step function. We know that in the heavy side step function, whenever x is negative, the function has a value of zero. And when x is positive, then the step function has a value of one. Also, this step function can be shifted to x zero. And then we can write the step function as this form here. So, Let's use the heavy side as a function in order to simplify these equations here. It can be written as this. 
Here we have the heavy side step function in the right hand side, and we have P1 minus P2 as the argument of the heavy side step function. Whenever it is negative, then the, we have a value of zero for the step function, and whenever it is positive, then we get one. Therefore, it gives us exactly the same two equations that we have here. But also we can include an additional term here. I call it a trigger pressure. This allows us to uh, simulate the valve behavior such that whenever the pressure across the valve surpasses a threshold value, PV, only in those circumstances, in those situations, the valve open. This is the main equation that we are going to use in order to model valves in the cardiovascular system. So, in the next video, we are going to use this equation to solve a circuit, a 0D model of the cardiovascular system such as this one, including a valve and some other components such as resistors and inductors.